Hi everyone, I'm back with another camera movement tutorial. This time I'll be talking about zooming, dolly, and soli. And I will show you how to do this camera movement in Clip Studio Paint. For the first part of the video, I'll be focusing on dolly, and I will also share a template that I made for this tutorial so you can use them as a starting point. You can find the link in the description below. So let's begin by asking why you need to do this camera movement. In my opinion, you don't need to have camera movement in every single shot. For me, I use this camera movement to improve the delivery of a certain emotion. In the case of zoom in or dolly in, it is usually used to draw the audience into the scene. Especially if you use a slow gradual movement, it gradually makes the audience more intimate to the scene or to the characters. It is very effective to use in a scene where the characters is having an important conversation that you really don't want your audience to miss. The opposite works for zooming out or dolly out. It detaches the audience from the scene, so usually it's best used for establishing short or to transition out of the scene. Now let's move on to creating the effect in Clip Studio Paint. For zooming in and out, you just need to use keyframe or the duty camera, key the scale and you're done. It is a bit tricky for dolly or tracking because Clip Studio is a 2D software and you will need a 3D space for it to work properly. So I will try my best to imitate it. The idea here is I will separate my drawing into several planes which I will move each of them in different speeds similar to the parallaxing effect that I did in the previous tutorial. We will be moving our plane differently this time as the camera is moved forward or backward on a track in real life. And as usual the more plane you have will result in a better or smoother effect. I will use the perspective ruler again to help me estimate the movement of the plane. We're also gonna use the one point perspective. And if you haven't watched my previous video about animating the perspective ruler, I basically just put the perspective layer inside an animation folder and then I specify it. And we can begin animating by creating a new frame. What we'll be using this time is the grid size, also I'll be turning on the floor and the side grid. Next, I'll be setting the base grid into somewhere around here, so that I have good amount of line to track in case I want to make more planes. I'll move the side grid to the middle until it merges into one line. Next, I'll move the two purple line to match the two floor grid. This will be our tracking guides. Then we are ready to animate the grid. Basically we'll increase or decrease the grid size depending on if you want to dolly in or out. After each increase or decrease, we will pull the floor controller up or down until the grid matches the purple line. And keep repeating it until the dolly ends. And once you're done, you have your dolly guides. To create a constant speed for your dolly, you just need to make an increase mark on one of the original lines so we can track the increase consistently. And as for creating a slow in or slow out, we'll just need to create the mark accordingly like this for the slow in and this for the slow out so basically it's the same with designing your animation spacing once we have the dolly guide we can start making the guide for each of our plane make sure you are on the first frame then create a rectangle on one of the perspective line. The height doesn't really matter but just make sure it's over the horizon so it's not confusing. Create four lines towards the finishing point on another layer. Put the layer with the rectangle into a folder then duplicate it as many as your plane. Then start resizing each rectangle to match the perspective guide. For spacing I think it's best if you match it on the center of each cut or you can just space them consistently. 
Then enable keyframe on each of the folder, key the scale, move to the end while tracking the perspective line, add another key on the scale and adjust it to match the line, then repeat for each folder. And if the perspective line is outside of the canvas, just go to canvas properties, increase the overflow frame until you can see the line. Once you are done adjusting, you can refer it back to normal size. That's about it for this video. I'll be sharing on how to make the Zoli and more on the next video. Bye bye.